the physiology and biochemistry that underpins oxalic acid's mode of action is still scientifically unknown. And part of that is because we cannot raise varroa mites in the laboratory. No one has yet successfully managed to sustain populations of varroa mites in a lab environment. We can only successfully grow them out in the field in bee colonies, and that makes a range of standard science very, very challenging to do. Because we are used to being able to have neat little pots in our incubators and in our refrigerators and being able to breed them and do all these things and genetically engineer them and mark them. All these things that you can't do in the wild west of an apiary. Um, and that makes parts of honeybee science really hard. So we still don't know how oxalic acid works, but we know how amateurs works and we know how they evolve resistance to it. And actually, Frank Rinkovich, who's at the Baton Rouge lab with the USDA ARS, is one of the two or three world experts in this. And he'll actually be here in a week and a half sampling. He's going to Alabama first, and he's going right up through New England, sampling for mites to see, as a, as a free service, to see what the prevalence of amateur's resistance is and speak to beekeepers about their treatment regimes, their history, their experiences with Apivar versus Oxalic, um, and if you would like to volunteer to have your mic samples, your mice. we would <laughs> yeah. very much like to have, especially you are on board with that. So yeah. uh, me and Frank have been collaborating for quite a while now, um, fingers crossed that collaboration continues. We have very complementary skills, but it is something that's been very <laughs> honed in on at the moment. What's interesting for our outfit is I've not been one of those. I have not abused amatraz. I've not. A, no, no. Uh -uh. I don't throw in the kitchen sink when it comes into amatraz, and so I was really puzzled last year when it didn't work well. I've heard lots of gossip and rumors. People say that you know they've had packages of strips analyzed, and even within the same package, some strips have more and others have less. I don't know if that's. It all is true, a very right? unstable molecule. Mm -hmm. If you put it into, if it's exposed to water, it. Um, about ha it has a half-life, as we call it, of about 30 to 45 minutes, which means that within less than an hour, but which means if you analyze it and there's any amount of water in there, you're not going to detect too much of it. But the molecule that it forms in water is even more toxic to the mites. So there's some nuance there where it's just as effective, but doing the chemistry to detect it is harder. So, and, and those kind of things of confusion just okay. only fuel the gossip mill. Yeah, you can analyze the strip and there might not be much amateurs in there, but the thing that amateurs degenerates into is even more effective. That's part of how it works in, wow, in the mind. I know that. And yeah. the colony, I mean, apiary to apiary, you're going to have difference in sure. humidity. Different mite loads. And mite oh, loads. I'm going to step, and... step the subject down a little mm -hmm. bit to kind of a lower level because I get asked this question a lot in our store. Once you open the package, how long are the strips good for? I have heard... Uh, if you put them in the freezer and you're not going to use them all, that they'll be fine, but I don't think... I think that's just somebody's theory. I, yeah, uh, exactly. I don't think we know. I'm not speaking on behalf no. of Vita Farmer here. That's <laughs> okay. not my... <laughs> non-answer. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Well, I mean, I, that is above my pay grade. Their scientists, <laughs> scientists are paid thrice what I am. Oh, yes. I am <laughs> not, I'm not shouldering that burden for them. Okay. <laughs> We're selling a lot of it in the store. I don't know what to tell people. I... Part of me wants to say, oh, no, you know, we've got several choices in the store. Mm -hmm. I try to tell people the pros and cons of all of them. And part of me wants to tell them that, you know, I didn't have very good luck with this product last year, but I don't I'm, go I, there. I say that when I talk, you know, same with formic acid. I've not had good luck using formic acid. Yeah. But that's a limited number. I mean, I have friends that use formic acid and they swear by it. Yeah, I know yeah. big guys are using it. Yeah, they just say. love it. And um, I've just not had good results. I'm, maybe I need to revisit it. But just like with thymol, you know, when I'm talking to beekeepers, you know, it all depends on the time of year and when yeah, um, they're needing to treat. And, and to me, Apivar is, oh my gosh, it's August, it's at 95 mm -hmm. degrees, I've got a high mite load, i got to get something in now. Like, I don't have time. This colony does not have we, time. I had right. a beekeeper speak to me about this just this week, actually. They said, I... My mites are out of control. What can I put in at this time of year? And really, the only thing I felt comfortable recommending yeah. was Apivar in the hope that the amateurs would work. But there was nothing else that I felt confident suggesting Apigar. to them. 
In right. Agar, we could use. In Agar, what's the attribute? If you're we careful with it. Thymol. See, I, I know, you I know, know, I don't trust this stuff. stuff. But I, I was not work with it. I see I'm, abstentions left, right, and well, that's why that's, you got to be gotta, careful with it. I, yeah. And for a newbie beekeeper, I was nervous. We've also done. Um, some testing on related compounds that I can't go into detail with because it's under NDA. Um, but just because they, some things then essential oil, natural molecules, does not mean that it's suddenly safer. Right. And yeah, and just because fact, it's deep organic doesn't mean it's. And safer. in fact, if if you would have watched me when I was handling all the different pesticides that we handle in the lab, the yeah. thing I am the most careful of is the the pure thymol because if that gets on my skin, it will do me a lot of damage compared oh, yeah. to everything else we work with yeah get um, it on your you know rub your eye with oh, you know, that's, that's 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 uh that's something i think that needs to be uh resonated too is that you know uh essential oils are concentrated and 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 you know like uh we get some different things for like soaps and stuff yeah uh, and the 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 cautions on the on the label they're no are, joke. They're no joke. And I, I, you know, I, I have seen, uh, you know, I weighed out some lemongrass and it ate through the plastic cup. A hundred percent. I mean, so like, you know, you, yeah. no, absolutely. No, these, these, these isolated That's um, dangerous. chemicals yeah. like thymol, like carvacrol, it's isomer. Um, they're, they're mean compounds. Yeah. Well, let me, let me just give a little or a kind of positive spin. So Apolife Var, I have used, I used that up until I started thinking about oxalic acid after seeing a lecture by Mary, Dr. Marion Ellis, University of Nebraska, who has since retired. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the reason I was such a, a proponent of Apolife Var is because we were one of the first labs to research mm -hmm. it when Steve Forrest at Rushy Mountain, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, he, he was really instrumental in, in getting it approved here in the United States. I like Apolife R, but you can you have to know what you're doing. You have to look at the temperature, you need to look at your forecast for the next 14 days, you need to know your population of your bees, and I always use almost half of the dose they recommend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either Apogard or Apolife R. Yeah. If it calls for, you know, 50 mils um, in a double D, I give them maybe 20. That's and I'm a, I'm also looking at I'm looking at the forecast the 14 day. I'm not just looking at what's happening that day. Mm -hmm. And that's, that to me is, a, it, that's why these essential oils, I think they do a number on mites. They are great. However, you can also kill your colony. Yeah. yeah. And, or get your queen absconded. Yeah, I've ruined some colonies, mm -hmm. sure enough. Yep. Yeah. And so you have to, I would rather, you know, less is more always in my book um, with any kind of compound that I'm using. And then I'm going to monitor and say, okay, well, it did okay. Mm -hmm. I'll put in a second application at a lower yeah. rate. And maybe Although it is worth saying that that principle can speed up. With something like Amatraz, that is a surefire way to evolve resistance, resistance right. is yeah. to use less than is recommended. Yeah. That right. is exactly but, what that's we don't extremely want to do. common. The instructions say one strip for five frames of bees. Well, I've got six or seven frames of bees, I'll just put in one strip. No, wrong. But, uh, but we have to talk to synthetic versus essential, and we know that with essential oils like thymol, that we're attacking an entire integument, entire system, as opposed to a nerve agent or a stomach agent. So the 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 um, r rapidity, what is it? The the quickness of uh, resistance in a resistance to thymol, I think, is not such a question as an, like. Amitraz or Kumafos mm -hmm. or fluvalinate. Boy, um, Kumafos went fast. Went fast. Extremely fast. So did fluvalinate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they both did. But Kumafos, you're right. Um, um, There's an interesting hypothesis about Kumafos, though, that mites resistant to Kumafos may be much more vulnerable to other um, pesticides because the resistance to Kumafos actually comes from the loss of a detoxification enzyme because Kumafos itself isn't toxic to the mites it's what their body converts it into and so the resistance to Kumafos comes from a lack of the ability to convert Kumafos into this other compound and that that ability comes with the loss of um, capacity to digest a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's where I, we come back to IPM, where this idea that rotating treatments helps kind of 
pin the biology in place. Hmm. One thing um, we we didn't talk about, and I, I just remember because I mentioned Dr. Marion Ellis, who I just adore, by the way. Um, you know, he saw me perform. You when mentioned I, that, yeah. He, yeah. It, it was so funny. We were at a Young Harris, and it was I, I, I was a graduate student. Hmm. I mean, I was green, green, green. Way before my time, then. Yeah, <laughs> were you even born then? Um, <laughs> just, I can guarantee I was actually only just. Mm, I definitely was, um, but he he kept he, we met and he's like I, I've I've seen you before, and I'm like no, this is like my first B meeting. He said no no no, you've had to have been in another B meeting, and I'm like mm, I think no, I've not been. I mean I was green green just out of class, out of mm. Keith's class, Dr. Delaplane's class, and he's like I know you, I know you, and and. So for three days at the Young Harris B Institute, he kept coming up and asking, "Okay, where have you lived? Mm-hmm. What you know? Blah blah blah, da da da." And because he was, it was driving him crazy. He's like, mm-hmm. "I know this person, and where do I know her from?" So now I'm talking to somebody, and we're talking talk about theater, and you know, I used to do improv, and I was up in Chicago, and he he overheard it. And he goes, "That's it. I saw you perform." In Chicago, mm-hmm. isn't that that Wild. funny? What's the chances? You know? I know, I know. <laughs> so now we have to say that in Jennifer's previous life incarnation, she was a stand-up comic, and anybody that knows her well can see why, because she's very, uh, she's very sharp on her feet. Mm-hmm. I'm very shy. Shy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very shy. I'm very, I, I don't talk. Very much. I'm very. Shy. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're. Uh, you're pretty smart on your feet when interacting with joking and things. I've always been impressed with that ability. Oh, thank you. you can tell me a joke, and I've got to think about it for a minute, you know. But I use your technique. I, you, you, you're the one that taught me this. You told me if you're nervous before you speak to a group, just tell a joke that you've got memorized. Mm-hmm. And I do that a lot. I learned that from you. That first five seconds, when you walk out, you know, and you stand in front of that microphone or you stand in front of that podium. That first five seconds is the hardest. If you can get control of that, yeah. and you can get them to laugh, or you make some kind of little something, mm-hmm. boom, then it's just... Yeah. Well, you did that for a while, too. I mean, you traveled the country. You really did do that. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we did. But okay. it's, it was a multitude of things that happened in Los Angeles that shifted me, and the skies part, and the sun shone, and, and I heard this voice, Entomology. <laughs> what a contrast! <laughs> right? wow. I know I was in living in Hollywood, and and uh, and it was like I think I need to go back to school. Um, yeah, I'll just I'm not gonna go in. You know all the, yeah, all the stuff, yeah. but but yeah, and I went back to school. And, well, yeah. what else do we want to throw out there before oh, this is yeah, over? So We're this, running I, out of okay, real battery. Quick. And... So Mary and Ellis. So went off on that. Mary and Ellis. All, all his work was done on tr- the trickle method or the dribble method, mm, mixing yeah. the oxalic acid yeah. with the sugar syrup, which is a brilliant. I got a hair, which is brilliant. It works great, but that's where we start seeing a lot of detrimental effects. I on did the bees. just just casual experience. Yeah. I do it once. And then not so much trouble. Do it twice, and, and it's, it's like, wait a minute! I just lost a third of my bees. Right. Where did they go? Right. And he yeah. says that in their research that you really can only use one application yeah. per year. Mm. I yeah. mean, seriously, per year. Mm. And it works. It, it's such a good pro, a good way to apply oxalic acid um, because you do it in the winter when the colonies are broodless. It's very fast. It's not really detrimental or dangerous to us. I mean, like yeah. the vapor, where you have to wear your right. respirator. Mm-hmm. You do have to wear goggles and gloves, um, but it's not as dangerous. But boy, if you mess up on just slightly on the concentration of oxalic acid, yeah. it's death to the colony. Mm-hmm. Whereas we have found with the oxalic acid so far, I mean, we we were shooting seven, eight grams mm-hmm. of oxalic acid in some of these colonies, and not a dead beat. Yeah, you asked Bob what's, so hold, what's the hold on numbers. right now. Yeah. I'm gonna I wanna I got some more questions too. Yeah. I'm gonna check the battery, make sure we're not about to go dark. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're what were you saying? Let's start over again. So Which, we were discussing, you know, how resilient the bees are in the face of oxalic acid vaporization mm-hmm. and you asked earlier, Bob, um, you know, what, what does an overdose look like? And really the bees show a lot of integrity and kind of um, robustness in the face of the in the in the vaporization we're really not sure yeah. how much you'd have to give them 
to, to sure cause problems. Is, yeah. I mean, I'm there, sure that there'll always be some limit, but they seem to be pretty, pretty capable of dealing with a really heavy hit of the oxalic acid vapor. And then on the other side of that, from the food science perspective, um, you know, the USDA has declared that they don't believe it feasible that beekeepers would ever even be able to get enough oxalic or oxalate as it is when it's in solution into honey for it to be of concern. There's so much oxalate in things like rhubarb, spinach, kale, cocoa, so dark chocolate is a great comparison because it's something that you're going to eat in similar volume to honey. Mm-hmm. There's so much oxalate naturally in what we consume that they examined how likely you are to find residues significantly higher than that in honey and basically said it's not going to happen. There is no real feasible way that that's a risk, which is why they will be moving towards maybe by the time this comes out, but you know, soon. Um, we can use these oxalic acid products with the honey supers on because we, we eat so much oxalate yeah. just part anyway. of our diets anyway that, that it's not constant. Well, it's already been yeah. approved, but the problem is anything that you have on the shelf right now does not have the label for it. So mm-hmm. until the new label comes out, um, it's technically you're not supposed to be using it. Yeah, there's some ambiguity there, but such is federal regulation. But I will say what you were just kind of a um, side note from what he was saying. Cameron Jack was using four grams of oxalic acid per one deep box. No issues. Mm-hmm. He found nothing. Yeah, and we are going to, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be looking at that specifically. Even though we were looking, you know, we were looking at colonies, um, we weren't seeing brood issues because we're in them every week. Mm-hmm. We're not seeing dead bees. We're not seeing you know population decreases. But we're actually going to look at doing a, uh, just a quick brood viability with the two gram and three gram dose and uh, adult bee survivability. Yeah, so we're gonna run an experiment that's not all looking at mite control with oxalic, but the oxalic acid safety. That's, the, that's what we'll be measuring. We'll be marking up you know, young brood, just new hatched larva, and then checking to see their survival rates when they're being hit with these these bigger doses. Mm-hmm. So that will be a nice little. That'll be great. Yeah, I know. I know when you've used my bees in the past. I, I I've never gone. I've never been educated in how to do scientific research and everything. And I was a little surprised at the detail, and the weighing everything and measuring everything. And I was like, is this really necessary? Well, I guess it is. Yeah. And often, yeah, we're doing that. And often years. you you don't know if it's going to be necessary. It is very easy to find yourself a couple of months down the line after the work was done, yeah. noticing something interesting and thinking. If I just had this one extra piece of information, <laughs> I could figure this out. <laughs> All about you know, the data. Yeah, and yeah. you know, you can't go back in time and tell yourself, make sure you measure this extra thing. Yeah. And so sometimes we can be a little overzealous, I suppose, in getting everything down, and maybe a lot of it doesn't end up being useful. So is there going to be a bunch of college students in my beehives? <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And I will agree with that. through that last time. Yeah. Um, it's like, what did they do with that queen? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we. Bob was so gracious in, in letting us use 200 of his colonies a couple years ago on this extended release study, and unfortunately, it didn't show any results. And you lost a lot of bees. I lost a lot. And of I'm bees, yeah. I'm sorry about that. And I'm surprised you're well, actually going to allow us to come back. And I didn't feel bad about it because I feel like I'm benefited so much by being right there to watch the results. You can read about it in a paper, but watching it with your own eyes, that's educational. That gives you a degree of wisdom that you don't get by reading a yeah. research paper. Yeah, we just did not get any control. And, and the, yeah. now the colonies that you had put Amitraz in, though, remember those? They were okay. They were okay. They were okay but the yeah. ones that we were using the extended release shop yeah. towels were not. And that yeah. was our positive control. Mm. But um, but anyway, I, I, I we keep... Bob is getting ready to donate 45 colonies for this Alien Cap study that we're going to start up in two weeks. And yes, there will be a few college students, okay. but we will be very careful with your queens. I was just joking. I know. I know. I know. But I do want, I, I would love And it. none of them will be green college students no, either. Yeah. Every single one of them has a full summer's beekeeping experience. Yeah. As a Here's minimum. what I've learned with this type of thing. Don't donate anything you're not Willing, willing to lose. To lose. <laughs> if, you, if it's going to kill you to lose yeah. it, don't do it. No. Yeah. Well, I would love it if Jesse could be there with us. He will. Crew. Yeah. He will. Yeah. Cause you, I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we'll be doing the full-on colony assessments like we did before. Yeah, we'll be there for part of that. Yeah. yeah. we got a good yard of bees chosen for you. Uh, they're in a good spot, easy access, 
full sun, not, so you'll do lots of sweating. We are used to that. Yeah, I know. Well, I want to have my canopy. We need to have a little canopy that we could... Actually, we should bring one. We should bring our canopy, seriously. No, I agree. Just to have, like, breaks. Are you going to be there? Yeah, no, I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right, cool. Lewis has been... Yeah, he's very... He's been wonderful. Yeah. And he's the reason... He's the re, He's one reason why I'm doing my PhD. Not the reason, but one reason why. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised at how many people call you, maybe I shouldn't say this, people call you Dr. Barry, Barry but you're not there yet. No, but I you're just, just close. started. And I wasn't going to even pursue the Ph.D. until I made that promise to my dad. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, I, that's what a lot of the stuff over here is about. This is it? all, yeah. That's, yeah. PH, that's chapter three. This is chapter two, and chapter one is what Lewis yeah. and I just wrapped mm. up. Okay. And then there's a whole bunch of my work over yeah. there that has all sorts of marked up syringes and well, scary looking needles and things like that. Well, congrat <laughs> I congratulate you on the effort and when you're done there's going to be a party involved. It will be a very large party. Oh. <laughs> yes. Maybe, and I think we should move the party around the world. What do you think? <laughs> international, huh? Yeah, I think it should be an international party. We could do it at your house just like your wedding. That was a good That party. was fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. We had 75 people in our living room. Oh my gosh. And a band. And a band. Really fun. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot going on. She knows how to do it. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah, that was that was yeah, a that blast. All right. Anything last words before we wrap this up? I really appreciate your time, I, both of you. And uh, well, um, we love you. Bob. I've enjoyed yeah, myself. Yeah, this is my favorite part of our job, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And I'm, I'm, and again, I applaud you because I think you're putting out good, solid information that beekeepers need. Mm -hmm. And and so please reputable sources read reputable mm -hmm. sources don't get sucked into the youtube world of fantasy beekeeping and it's hard to tell people you know what to stay away from. they how do you know if you're a new beekeeper i know you, you don't, don't. Yeah. that's why you know i put I always put up that list of books you know mm -hmm. the abc xyz of bee culture you know uh, the, the hive and the honeybee mm -hmm. you know dr delaplane's book uh, Dr. Uh, Dewey Karen's book, mm -hmm. and the Karen and Columns, uh, bees and beekeeping. Yeah. Um, you know those; th they're solid mm -hmm. information. And then you know, become subscribed to American Bee Journal, to Bee Culture Magazine. That's yeah. Join a club. Your local club. I say this yeah. to every beekeeper group. Having moved around so much, having gone from the north of England to the far south of it to California to here, mm -hmm. and travelled and, and seen beekeeping in different places. There is no substitute for local knowledge yep. to what goes on in your environment. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect, and yeah, and there really yep. isn't. You know, your peers are your ultimate resource, and that is true, in, just as true in beekeeping as it is true for me as a scientist. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. It was a good, good visit. Thank you. And now we're going. Where are we going for lunch? Uh, chops and hops. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. memory coming up here how it can fool you mm -hmm. okay all right jesse and i are at the university of georgia in athens georgia, athens georgia i'll say that again too but it's better it's always hard to get that first yeah, intro yeah. Yeah. jesse can and you i introduce me as madame madame <laughs> jennifer Barry. i can do that might even throw that in the bloopers part <laughs> okay jesse